Sacramento in the house. <laughs> what up, dog? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, man? Looks like we got a little shaky signal there. Let's uh, give it a second to uh, fix itself. And then we will begin. Aaron Cameron, everyone, number four from the Rattlers. Didn't come back last year. We're a little ticked off about that, but I'm sure he's got big stuff going on in his life, and we completely understand. How are you, my friend? Give us a little update. Tell everybody what you've been up to over the past year. Oh, man, over the past year, uh, I've just been here in SAC, um, going to school over at SAC State, finish finishing up with a degree, um, still doing my photography thing, got into poetry, um, doing some financial services and everything like that, studying to get my uh, life insurance license. Um, and yeah, man, just trying to stay safe uh, from this whole COVID-19 thing. So yep. that's about it. Listen, dude, you know, we see a lot of student athletes that, they, I mean, they're taking their courses and they have a bit of an idea of what they want to do career-wise, but you're the type of individual that, seems to you need to have a few different things going at any given time and creativity is key for you is that is that fair to say yeah big time big time i'm very creative i have to be <laughs> yeah yeah what's what's it been like i mean i i would imagine that uh the lockdown there maybe it's maybe it's even been more strict there than here for the for the lockdown but spending a lot more time at home how are you managing to be creative while you don't necessarily have the, the world at your fingertips the way you might normally do? Uh, I think that's the beauty of it. When uh, you don't really have, you know, the world or the outside to actually, you know, get, you know, creative and you're not you know, out there. But when you're inside and you're in your own zone, I think that's when you actually have to dig deeper and dig into that more creative part of yourself. You know, mm -hmm. no matter what that spectrum is, with, if it's painting or doing what I do with photography, you know, you have to really teach yourself to, you know, dig deeper in within your own abilities and actually bring out some new skills or some new aspects that you didn't even know you were good at. So, yeah. you know, it's fun. You, uh, you dabbled a lot in photography while you were here in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, wh where, did that, where did that all come from and how did that all begin, your uh, passion for photography? Oh man, photography, it, uh, it started actually with um, my older brother. Um, back when I was like a kid, he, uh, he sketched a lot and I used to like, you know, do a whole lot of, you know, tracing it with his work, you know, and then I used to see him like, you know, put up pictures or to do some photography himself. And then I was like, I wonder if I can do it, you know? And then, you know, my parents bought me like a point and shoot camera and then he got married and I started taking pictures at his, at his wedding and started, you know, messing with the different angles and all the different positions, zooming in. It's like a, it's a whole different thing. You know, it's, it forces you to, you know, especially at a young age, it forces you to see a world from, you know, your own point of view or from like a different spectrum. So, you know, it was a fun experience and I just, you know, took it from there. So what, what types of photography do you do a lot of these days? Like, are you managed to make, to make a little money or would you still say it's very much still a hobby? Um, it, it, it turned into a bit of a career. Um, I've been doing a lot of portrait shoots. Um, uh, a lot of people are still hitting me up for uh, graduation shoots, you awesome. know, especially in these times where, you know, can't really have a graduation. You have to do virtual, but like people still want pictures. So you know, now with all the yeah. time in the world, you know, you have to find um, some time where, you know, you're able to just go out, you know, especially now if it's it's hot, it's like 102, I think right now. And you have to find those cool parts of the day where, you know, you have to go and go and take pictures. But um, graduation, portrait, um, just anything I can really, you know, get my hands on, you know, I don't really want to be stuck in one niche, you know, I want to be yeah. able to do it all, so... What's your favorite camera? What do you got that you use the most? Oh, man. Uh, it's actually an old camera. It's a Canon 20D that the family has had for um, a long time, you know, and I've actually been uh, looking into more stuff. Um, Dad actually bought me a, a, a drone that I've been dying to go use. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, so videos and pictures from 
when the skies are on the way. So uh, awesome. There's that, and uh, I'm actually looking to get a some something new, something newer. So good for you. Good for you. Everybody, this is Aaron Cameron, number four from the Rattlers basketball team uh, a couple years ago. He's uh, given us a bit of his time here, and we're so thankful for that. Uh, Aaron, how did you even end up in Medicine Hat? I mean, look at you, California boy, and I'm sure you had many educational opportunities there closer to home. Why in the middle of the Alberta prairie in a country that you'd probably never even been to before? Oh, man. Uh, Canada actually, you know, it was – at the time, it was probably like the only option I had because uh, previously I went to what three colleges before that. Um, starting out at East Bay, coming out of high school, uh, was there for two years. I registered in my second year, and uh, you know I, I took a little break from it. Then I had to go to Fresno City. I was there for nine months. Did did a great job over there. Got my AA degree, and then I went on to uh, University of West Georgia for a year and things just didn't work out over there in my favor and you know next thing you know i know d'angelo is in uh is in medicine hat yep. and uh he was over at fresno city with me so um you know my my coach from fresno city reached out to him and uh next thing you know i'm in contact with colin rocco and coach rich and you know the rest is history i was able to come in over there and had a great time while I was there. I miss it. I miss it a lot, man. <laughs> what? Um, why didn't you come back? I'm sure you get asked that a lot. I'm sure everyone is saying, ah, oh, he's, he's a lock to come back here. He's going to be a big part of the team. But it just didn't happen. What happened there? Yeah, man. Uh, what really happened, it was, um, it, was, it was a choice. It was either to go back or, you know, to go to Sac State and just finish up the degree part of it and um, have that discussion with the family and, you know, came to the conclusion that just finishing up with the degree was was best you know since I only had like a, a small amount of time left so yeah. just getting the degree and you know just get that out the way you know is the best part and um and if I'm not mistaken I think I still have a year left over there to to play <laughs> come so, on over let's go let's and, go hey, if, if, if it's still <laughs> If the offer stands, which I'm sure it does. Uh, the so still stands. Your, uh, your family had a chance to visit here during the season. Yeah. Uh, what, what did they think of this whole experience? I mean, it's a completely <laughs> different planet from them in California, I'm sure. Oh, little day, that was cold. <laughs> yeah. Kansas, Canada, man. During probably like one of the coldest weeks, and I kid you not, man. It was all the snow and... They they loved it and hated it at the same time, but they they loved the fact that I was I was out there and um, I was enjoying myself and um, in that small town I was able to you know have fun and you know and bring like a, a different it brought a different perspective to me about you know not only the game of basketball but just life in general you know Canada is a great spot a great spot to mm -hmm. be and the people were warm you know brought me in with open arms and. No, I'll, I'll always appreciate people there for that. So, okay, so that was that was a highlight, maybe like off the court. How about a, how about an on court highlight? Maybe mm. a basketball moment that you'll always remember from your time here. What would you say? Oh man, I think a a moment that um, that I'll always remember. I think it was that tough game versus uh, Lethbridge at home. It's ironic because you know we we lost that game, but. It was a game where, you know, uh, I had 39 that game. And I think I had to really dig, uh, dig like, deeper and deeper within myself to actually try to try to win and do everything and and just bring the team together. But I remember that game because I believe before the game and during halftime, um, Coach Rich, uh, he would sit me down, and he did this a, a lot of times during the season, but he told me, like, look, I see it in your eyes. You want to win, and, and it's, it's really getting to you. You know, you're treating this game. You're treating this game like it's a business, and, you know, in some aspects and where you want to go as far as professional, yeah, that may be the case, but it's a game. You know, I see it in your face. You're not having fun or whatever, but have fun. Have fun with yep. the game. Let it come to you. Smile more. 
you know, just be yourself out there on the court. And once I tapped into that and was just able to just let go and have fun, you know, it became a lot easier. It became a lot easier to play. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll always appreciate Coach Rich for that. And, you know, I just stopped for a second on the court, um, like seconds before, you know, the buzzer just went off. I just looked around at the crowd and I was like, yeah, it's like I wasn't I wasn't as disappointed. I wasn't as upset as I normally would be. But, you know, I, it was just like a breath of fresh air. And I was like relieved that I just wasn't as so tense as I normally mm-hmm. was. And, you know, I, I had fun, I had fun from then on out. Awesome. Awesome. Um, tell us what's going on in California these days with uh, COVID and coronavirus and whatnot. I mean, you know, here here in Alberta, our province has actually uh, hit particularly hard. Uh, we've had a rough couple of months here, uh, not necessarily in Medicine Hat, but the province in general. How about California? What's uh, what's your what's your vibe and your feeling over there? Uh, besides the hot weather, uh, <laughs> but. Um... California, man, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on. You know, we'll um, usually see on TV um, a lot of times where people are still, like, going outside. Uh, a lot mm-hmm. of people aren't wearing the masks and gloves like they're supposed to, but I don't know what that is. With people just being stubborn, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I think um, I think in California that we're – we're going to catch on eventually. Like, look, you're really supposed to wear this mask. You're about, you're really supposed to stay inside. Stop mm-hmm. being so stubborn, <laughs> you know? And, exactly. You know, but, you know, I think like the impression I get with some Americans, it's that give me Liberty or give me death mindset, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, you know what? I mean, Hey, you can dig your heels in, mm-hmm. but is it really worth dying over? You know, yeah. wear the mask, let's get through this and, and you'll have freedom on the other side. Right. Just man. do the smart things. Right. Right, right. And and that, that is the big thing, you know, especially, oh, yeah, Americans, give me freedom or give me death. You know, they yeah. don't really, we don't really think everything through. Exactly. <laughs> we don't think everything through. Uh, Aaron Cameron joining us right now, number four from the Rattlers basketball team a couple of years ago. I see, uh, I see a few members of that team that are watching this right now. Uh, Colin, Colin Rolko says, my best memory of AC was the first exhibition game in Lethbridge. Do you remember that? Oh yes, yes it I says did. it says he hit four straight threes to start the game. We knew we had a playa. We knew we had a playa then. <laughs> remember that game? Yeah, I do. I do. I do remember hitting those four straight threes, man. And it's funny. It's funny because um, Colin was one of the first guys that I talked to before I even came to Medicine Hat. And uh, I would look up highlights and everything, and he he was you know the shooter, the guy that you know, and I think I think I challenged him to a to a three point competition <laughs> as soon as I got there or whatever. And I don't think we ever got to it, but man, I just knew he could shoot, and you know he watched highlights on me and um, had his you know own expectations. But you know as soon as I hit those four straight threes in Lethbridge, I think I caught him off guard. <laughs> they are hot and a lot of people off guard. So it was, uh, it was good for you. It was fun. Good for you. Uh, I know. I know that you know you're you're a pretty deep guy. You got a lot of thoughts on a lot of things that are going on these days, and uh, just based on what's going on in the news these days, I I would be I would be remiss if I didn't uh, ask you and get your thoughts on what's going on in Minnesota these days. You're, you're following that story, I'm sure. Give me a few thoughts on that. Oh man, it's a. That's a big tragedy, man. It it's, it, it kind of it hurts a lot, but then again, it's like I'm kind of numb to it, and it's kind it's disappointing to say that. Mm-hmm. It's disappointing that I even feel that way. But looking at the past history, you know, within young black men in America and what has happened, and you know, not even just black men, just black people, you know, and seeing yeah. what happens with you know the police force, and you know, it just uh, it happens so much. And with everything that's going on in Minnesota, it's like, well, it's been happening so much. We tried to peacefully protest. We tried to march and riot and, you know, try to get all these things to happen for us. It's like, okay, now actions are actually starting to be taken. Like, people are not going to just stand for this. 
-hmm. you know, so actions are going to be taken. And I don't know where, like, to the extent of that action is going to happen, but but it's it's gonna it's gonna be a real eye opener, and um, hopefully some positive changes come out of it, and hopefully we come together as a people, you know, yep. so so this stuff doesn't happen again. Well, we're definitely thinking of you guys. I mean, here in here in Canada, we're following that story as well. It's not that far from us. Uh, Minnesota is not that far at all, and so. Uh, we're, we're keeping an eye on that. Um, once again, everyone, this is Aaron Cameron joining us. We don't want to take up too much of your time here. Um, let's, do, let's do a little show and tell. Find something around you in the room there right now that kind of maybe reminds you of Medicine Hat or reminds you of basketball or might inspire us watching right now. Is there anything that comes to mind right now that you could show us that's actually kind of cool? Oh, man, from around my room? I mean, I always have this uh, handy. Yeah, I have I have this. Ah, look at that. <laughs> I always have this, you know, especially when I'm uh I would find the time to watch, you know, the Rattlers play, you know, watch my guys on the court. What is that? What does that logo mean to you? Oh man, it's this logo, man, it helped me with identity a lot. You know, I found myself okay. um a lot in medicine hat and you know, the different sides of me that I didn't know I had. You know, because when I was there, you know, it's like I, I love people. I love kids. You know, I, would, I was always helping out, going to, you know, elementary schools or middle schools and high schools, you know, helping out, you know, was going to help with uh, disabled disabled people, you know. Mm -hmm. I was I was a mascot for other sports. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was you. Was, that was good. Yeah, I was, I was rowdy. I was, I was rowdy, man. And, awesome. I just had so much fun and uh you know i i found that kid again i found yeah. that kid again and it, it feels so good to just you know let loose and be goofy <laughs> and just you know have fun well listen aaron you know i i think i speak on behalf of uh all hatters and uh medicine at college uh, when I say that, uh, you'll always have a home here, man. Uh, you know, that saying, once a rattler, always a rattler. It's not just always. a phrase. We absolutely mean it. But tell me something. Mm -hmm. Deep down in your heart, do you think that you'll ever set foot in Medicine Hat again? Do you think that you're just going to, whether it's a holiday in the next few years, or maybe it'll take a decade, but do you feel that you'll come back here in one way or another? Oh, of course. Of course, I, I'd, I'd be I'd be foolish not to, you know, whether I'd be coming back and playing after I get my you know bachelor's degree here, um, whether I come back and play or I come back and coach or be a trainer, uh, no matter what, man, I'm, I'm always going to you know have medicine head in my heart and uh, always on my mind because, um, you know, coming back would be like a big, a big deal for me, you know, so yep. it's, it's another home. Colin says, alumni game. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Why not, right? Yes. Why not? Uh, yes. Janice, Janice Humphrey says, Bodie and Charlie miss you. She says, when are you coming back to the hat? Well, there you go. I think you've answered that. We don't know when you're going to be back. I mean, we don't, we don't know when the border's going to be open, but we are going to hold you to that. A lot of people heard you say that, and so we're going to make that happen. All right, Aaron, final, final words for you. Um, like I say, we got a lot of people watching right now, and of course, we're going to have the replay on YouTube a little later on. Give us, uh, give us, give us some words of wisdom. Give us some thoughts to live by from the mind of Aaron Cameron himself. Oh man, from my mind, uh, stay lit and lit, not meaning party and excited all the time. No, lit is like an acronym. I, uh, I would actually just, you know, keep in my head. Uh, live in today. Mm -hmm. Stay present in today. You know, don't think about tomorrow or the past or whatever. Today, right now, is the most important part of your life because you because tomorrow is not promised. You know, so focus on your family. Focus on you know your happiness. I don't care what you have to do. If you have to meditate, if you have to, you know, watch some motivational stuff on YouTube to to stay positive, read a book. I don't care what it is. Stay present and. Um, and do whatever you have to do to make yourself and the others around you happy. Because that's the most important thing in this life. Not the money, not the material things, any of that stuff. It's just happiness. You know, stay happy.
Boom. You killed it, man. Well done. Well done. All right. There he goes. Eric Cameron, number four, Rattlers basketball. We're going to see you again one day, my friend. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us tonight. Of course. Thanks for having me, man. Hey, right. Anytime we can do this again, I'm, I'm open for it. We will. All right. Take care. See you soon. See you soon. All right. All right, everybody. There he goes. Eric Cameron of the MedSnet College Rattlers. Very proud alumni, as you can see. You know, he's got that Rattlers cap with him, um, I guess, you know, in his house or wherever he goes. I don't know, but uh, very proud of, uh, of uh, all that he accomplished here. And uh, it's just too bad that it was only one year. But um, you know what? I got, a, I got a sense that there's a bit of a chance someday, somehow, he could be back here, uh, you know, at least one more year of eligibility. So fingers crossed. Anyways, guys, all the best. Have a great night. We've got uh, a number of guests lined up for next week, and so uh, I'm pumped about that. Listen, if you are a student athlete, uh, past uh, or present, and uh, we can learn a little bit about you, we can have a little interview like this, uh, reach out to Patrick, and we will lock you in, and we'll make it happen. All right? Have a great night, guys. Stay safe. See you soon.